Hey Bees, I'm Marie from Humble Bee and Me, and today, in honor of my upcoming birthday, which is tomorrow, August 16th, we are making some fireworks lip gloss. This stuff is positively loaded with iridescent glitter, and it smells and tastes like vanilla, uh, and I think it's amazing, too. <laughs> so the inspiration from this came from basically me having some glitter. I went to Windy Point, and they just started carrying iridescent glitter, and guys, like, so pretty when you look at it you have all these beautiful flashes of like a bright sort of green and and like a little bit of like a hint of lavender and oh, it's, it's mesmerizing um but yeah uh michelle from windy point sent me home with some of this and oh, i just was thinking like oh what are all the things that i can put glitter in and for some reason the first thing that came to mind was like a lip gloss so yeah, and I thought we should call it fireworks lip gloss because it's so bright and sparkly and shiny and it has so many different colors in it that it's kind of sort of like surprising when it catches the light and yeah. Oh. So as you can see, I do have two different colors here. This is sort of uncolored, just lots of glitter one and a tinted one that has a bit of added carmine to it. So um, obviously I'm gonna show you how to do both, um, tinted and not tinted. Uh, I would like to note that the version of this recipe that I'm making in this video today is really tiny because I make so much stuff that if I make a lot of tubes of lip gloss, every single time I make lip gloss, I have very quickly like seven lifetimes worth of lip gloss and that's too much lip gloss. Um, so this is a tiny batch and as such, the measurements are kind of weird. They're like, you know, decimal points of grams. Um, so if you want to make just like a tiny tutu batch like I did, follow my numbers, but if you want to scale it, check out the percents and then sort of scale from there. I don't recommend doing a 100 gram batch because each of these holds like 9, 10 grams of lip gloss and 10 tubes of lip gloss is an awful lot of lip gloss. For gifts, great, um, but for yourself, it's a lot of lip gloss. So I would sort of probably recommend going for maybe like a 50 gram batch depending on how much you like lip gloss but again totally up to you check out and see how much your tubes hold and do some percentage math i'll throw a batch like a link to a batch calculator in the description box below so that you can kind of have that do all the math for you but yeah i do also recommend getting a more precise scale if you don't have one that works down to two decimal points uh, of a gram those are amazing uh, but yeah for now i recognize that there's a good chance that many of you don't have one of those so Sort of feel free to scale the recipe as will accommodate your love of lip gloss and the accuracy of your scale. Now, this lip gloss uses Cerebellina, which is a modified beeswax to give it a really neat lip glossy oil gel-like consistency. If you don't have it, please check the description box below where I've included links to several other lip gloss recipes that I've done because there's absolutely nothing stopping you from using one of my other lip gloss base recipes and then just adding the glitter, the pigment, and the um, essential oil to that base which has uh you know beeswax and glycerin and or soy lecithin there's a couple different ones so take a look and if you don't have cerebellina and you don't want to get it there's a couple other options for you but also cerebellina is super super cool so i'm going to throw some uh links to some more reading about that in the description box below in an attempt to sort of cajole you into buying some <laughs> But yeah, this lip gloss comes together really, really easily. It's a lot like a lip balm, except there's more stirring because it's a softer final product. And so we stir it as it cools so it stays soft and creamy and lovely. And then we add glitter, 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 glitter. Oh yeah. And then maybe some pretty pink. Uh, and yeah, put it in our tubes. Doing that with a syringe. A lot of you have been sort of asking to see how that works. So now you can. And yeah, <laughs> let's go get our glitter on. We'll kick off our lip gloss by getting all of our melting ingredients combined in a small glass beaker or heat resistant glass measuring cup. So this is 3.3 grams of cerebellina, 4.4 grams of castor oil, 9.7 grams of safflower oil, and 4.4 grams of babassu oil, and you can use coconut oil instead. Now to melt this all together, I'm just going to pop our beaker in this water bath, which is a small flat bottom saucepan that has about an inch or three centimeters of water in it. And I'm going to go pop this on the stovetop over medium heat for about 20 minutes until everything melts through. All right, all we'll melty melty after about 20 minutes. So we're done with our water bath. I'm just gonna dry the outside of this beaker off and pop it on the countertop to help it cool. So with Cerebellina gels, you kind of go from this really liquidy state and then as it starts to cool, you'll start to get some solid bits accumulating along the sides of the beaker here. And what you're going to want to do to get a nice, smooth, sort of 
glossy, ointmenty sort of final product is make sure that you're scraping around the side of your beaker or your measuring cup as those bits come out and then scraping them down and incorporating them into the still liquid stuff so that you get a nice even blend. So we have to wait until this cools enough that we do actually start to get some of that solidifying. And then once that starts to happen, we'll stir it constantly until we have a sort of semi, semi-solid, creamy, pasty, glossy kind of concoction. And yeah, so time for a touch of waiting now. So it's just been a couple minutes and this has already started thickening up really nicely, which isn't surprising because there's quite a lot of surface area in contact with the cool countertop. And there's really not a lot of, not a lot of product in here. So we're stirring around and you wanna scrape off the side of your spatula and push that down and make sure that you're blending in any of the bits that are cooling and solidifying faster so that you get a nice even sort of ointmenty kind of consistency here. And at this point in time, you can really see sort of the effect of using a lot of white and clear oils. If I had used olive oil or jojoba oil or something, at this point in time, our lip gloss would have like a golden kind of tint to it. But here it's still quite white, which I think is gonna be great because it's really going to complement our gorgeous glitter beautifully. All right, so that's, at this point in time, I'm not concerned that this is going to sort of seize up on us and create any uh, really blobby bits or any sort of a solid top on a softer bottom. So I'm gonna leave this to cool a bit more. It's still quite, quite toasty to the touch. So I'll probably give it a few more stirs before we start incorporating the glitter, but uh, yeah, at this point in time, you can kind of set it aside and just give it an occasional poke while you maybe clean up some of the earlier part of your project. All right, so now it's time to get all shimmery. So here I have a silver mica, and as you can see, this is more of a white silver mica than a gray silver mica. So I know I got this from New Directions, which has since been discontinued, and so they called it silver mica, but I know a lot of other places that sell tons of different kinds of micas, like TKB Trading, their silver micas tend to be a little gray, like the precious metal. So you want to make sure you're getting this kind of silver mica for this look. And then this here is this gorgeous iridescent glitter from Windy Point. Oh my goodness, this stuff is so beautiful. Look at it go, look at it shimmer. Ooh. All right, so we've got our teensy measuring spoons here. This is my, my preferred set. Um, this is an eighth of a teaspoon, one sixteenth, and the next one's one thirty second, and then one sixty fourth. So it makes it all very easy because you know each of them is sort of like two of these is one of these, two of these is one of these, two of these is one of these. And then after this, you step up to a quarter teaspoon, which is a much more standard measuring spoon size. So I'm gonna start with a sixteenth of each and sort of see where that leaves us. Always better to start with less than you think you'll need than uh, more. The place you, you want to be testing this is not you know in the beaker, but on your skin. So I'm just gonna get a little, little dab here. Spread that around. All right, not sure how great that's coming through, but I can definitely see some glitter, but you know, not, not as much glitter as I'd like. So I'm gonna add another 16th of a teaspoon of this gorgeous iridescent glitter. A little bit more for more testing. Oh, I can really start to see the hints of like purple and lime green coming through. Ooh, okay, I still want more though. I, I'm a glitter fiend, I admit it. Okay. I think I'm gonna stop there. So that is a grand total of a quarter teaspoon of glitter. And uh, I think I, that's sort of enough of the mica. The mica will just give a bit of a, a subtle, smaller shimmer. And I've been debating, should I add some of, some of this? This is carmine that's been predispersed in castor oil from TKB Trading. So you can just add like a drop or two of it and it incorporates really beautifully, but I'm really liking 
the way that this looks. So I'm thinking beauty of lip gloss. I can do a tube or two of it like this and then add a little bit of this and kind of do the rest of them. Hmm. All right, I'm gonna do that. But first we need to add our vitamin E and our essential oils. So get a bit of vitamin E in here, two drops. For essential oils, I've chosen some benzoin, which has a lovely sort of vanilla-like scent to it. And as you can see here, if you can, kind of as it flows through the bottle, it's very viscous. So I kind of tend to measure this one in blobs rather than drops for small batches like this where weight is um, irksome if you don't have a very precise skill. So I'm gonna kind of do about two blobs. Uh, this is not an exact science by any means, but the beautiful thing about this is because it's not a true essential oil, it's a resin. It's nowhere near as potent as essential oil. So if you end up with, you know, sort of two and a half blobs <laughs> instead of two, it's not going to drastically overpower the recipe. So a large part of why I wanted to film a lip gloss recipe is to show you how I fill the tubes because I get a lot of questions about that. So here I just have a small, this is just a drinking glass, a uh, small mason jar, like one of the uh, half cup ones will work really well as well. And I've crammed a bunch of these lip gloss tubes into it so that they just, so they stay upright because they're you know small and squeezy, trying to fill them down here is a giant pain in the patoot. So having them all just crammed in here is great. If you don't have enough to, fill your jar, you know, just find literally anything else to um, just kind of fill the jar so that they stand upright. This here is a stand that I actually, that actually came with a completely different product, but I found it to be quite useful for filling syringes when upended, as it just sits in here. And I actually got these syringes from Lee Valley Tools here in Canada. Um, <laughs> not the sort of place I was expecting to find syringes at all, but uh, there you go. I'm going to pop sort of all of this in here, squeeze out enough to fill one tube, put the rest back into the beaker, <laughs> and then add a little bit of carmine because there's only enough here for about two and a half tubes. Um, and uh, just sort of seems easier at this point in time since I'm gonna be filling it anyways, make sure that I've got enough for each tube without trying to pull it out again because if you sort of have a partially filled syringe and you're trying to pull the like the pusher plug end back out. I don't know. I I don't enjoy that experience. It's quite messy. So it's much easier to just sort of go all and then transfer back and yeah. Alright, so I'm gonna pop this put that aside for now. So you can kind of see that it's obviously just all bunched up at the top here. So you can start to push it down and go pretty fast at first. And you can see it start to come out the tip here. So I'm gonna fill up one of these. You can also just, I'm gonna hold it so that you can actually see what's going on here. Okay, still quite a lot of air space in there. You can definitely see why I, <laughs> prefer to do this in the in the cup because this is quite oily and once it starts splooshing around it's quite difficult to handle and so make sure when you're doing this that you are leaving enough headspace for the orifice reducer and that you are pulling the syringe out occasionally to let out uh, the air that's trapped inside the tubes initially because if you don't it's just going to force the syringe out so now we can add our lid and our orifice reducer there's a little orifice reducer here this is the thing that sort of makes it look like look like a lip balm tube as you know it or lip gloss tube as you know it that just sort of scooches in there and then you can pop the lid on and then you can rub all the excess lip gloss off of this. You can also mist it with some isopropyl alcohol and wipe that down and that'll get even more off. And now, time for a bit of pink. So I'm just gonna 
pop our leftovers in here and it won't get quite everything because what's stuck sort of between here is uh, not going to come out until there's something behind it. So the first little bit of our squirt is gonna be a little not pink, but once we squish around in the tube, we should be able to get a good blend. And this is really just the beauty of doing things for yourself at home is that you can do stuff like this. This is probably not what you would call manufacturing best practices, but it's nice to get a slightly different project here with just one project. So start with kind of one or two drops here. There's two drops. You can see it's really, really vibrant and dark. And when we blend that in, we get some pink. Ooh, I like that. So getting this part out is always a little bit of a, a yank because there's a vacuum in there. And that's, there's sort of our half tube amount between that. I spilled and we can get a little bit more out here, but unfortunately that's not really, uh, not really an amount worth bottling or putting in a tube. So if you want to, you can put it in a small tin or uh, otherwise it's probably just waste. Um, remember that this recipe is quite scalable and for more information on that, be sure to check out the blog post so that you, know, you don't have to make just two tubes of uh, lip gloss if you don't want to. And there you go, you just made some fireworks lip gloss with an optional pink tint. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and check the description box below for the full written recipe with amounts in both metric and imperial and links to this recipe on my blog where you'll find lots more details, links to all of the ingredients and equipment that I use and information on scaling this recipe so you can make more than two tubes if uh, that's what you want, which I sort of suspect it is, but I make a lot of stuff. So whenever I make a lot of tubes of lip gloss, I, a lot of lip gloss ends up going to waste. But yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.